what we need to cover today is what makes a solution for these weird slope intercept equations or just linear equations in general. And uh, we're going to use a little bit of old knowledge of how to graph it. Also, um, going back to chapter four about how we plug in a solution to see if it makes a equation true. And uh, hopefully by the end of this, you'll know two different ways that you can check to see if uh, a solution exists for uh, one of these equations. So let's get into it. Y equals X plus two. At this point, we know that's in slope intercept form and we know how to graph it. Uh, we have the, the Y intercept, which is positive two, and that would let us be able to put a dot right here at positive two. We know that the slope is positive one and, and you know we make it to a fraction and that's our rise over run movement. And so we could keep going up and over, up and over, and then we would just connect the, the points and it would graph it. And so there we go. But now um, what we're doing is we're asking you questions going, hey, is the, does this ordered pair right here, is it a solution to this uh, equation? So we took this equation and we've graphed it. And now they're wanting to know is negative 2, 1, that's an ordered pair, is it a solution? And here's what I have to tell you. These points that are on this line, any point on this line, is a solution to this equation. So if it's given to you on a graph, you can literally in your mind go, well, where's negative 2, 1 at? And remember, it's always the x before the y. Okay, So that means I go to negative 2 on the x-axis right there. And since it's positive 1, I go up to the positive 1 on the y-axis. This point is not on the line, so no, it's not a solution. What about 0, 2? Well, let's take a look at this one. This is at zero, and there's positive two, and that's right on the line, so we would say yes. Now, that's what you would do is if you had a graph already given for you, or if you didn't think it'd be too difficult to graph the equation out. Um, it's not always gonna be a option, though. So let's go through and let's work this out. The equation was y equals x plus two. And if we're saying negative two, one is not a solution to it, it will make this not true. So the y is 1, so we substitute the y for 1. The x is a negative 2. And then the plus 2 is right there. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And we've got 1 left over there. So obviously, no, it's not a solution. So that's the reason we say it's not a solution. So you could actually just take this ordered pair and plug it into the equation without ever looking at this graph. Now, the 0, 2, we're saying that it's right on the line and that if we plug this into the equation, it would make it true. So y equals x plus 2. In this case, the x is 0, so that's a 0. The 2 is a y, so the y is a 2. And then we've got the plus 2 from the equation that's still sitting there. 0 plus 2 is 2. And yeah, that makes it true. So yes, we can see that we can take this uh, ordered pair, this point on the graph, plug it into the equation that makes it true, so it's a solution. So all solutions are on the line, okay? Solutions are on the line. That would mean all points that are not solutions are off the line, and that's where we got that one from. Now let's see if we can go a little bit deeper into this. Uh, we've got a new format now that's called standard form, and that's where the x and the y are on the same side of the equal sign. And this is a very popular format. Um, back here, we called this the slope intercept because we got our slope and then we got our intercept. So that's why we called it the slope intercept form. Well, don't panic when we see this. Later, I'll show you how to graph this type of equation. But today, we just want to find out is 3, 2 a solution for this equation? So we've got our, our possible solution, our x, y coordinate, right? And we take it and we plug it in. Well, 3 was the x and y is the 2. And 3 plus 2 is 5, so yes, that is a solution, okay? That means if we graph this equation, 3, 2 would be on the line. Now, what about negative 6, 1? Well, this is our x, and that's our y. And remember, just say your ABCs, and the x always happens before the y. So if you ever get confused about what comes first, x comes before y, just like in the alphabet. So x is 1, and y I'm sorry, x is negative 6. It helps if I look at my, my text here. This x is negative 6, so it's replaced with negative 6 here. And y is 1. 
negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. Well, sorry, that's not a true statement. Negative 5 does not equal positive 5. Okay. Now, I went ahead and I graphed x plus y equals 5, and here's the graph right here. Okay. And if we didn't have the graph, we would absolutely just be plugging these points into here to see if it's true. But since we have the graph, literally, we can just go and graph this point, 3, 2. Where is 3, 2 at? Here's 3 on the x and 2 on the y. So since it's right on the line, we'd say, yes, it's a solution. What about 0, 1? Well, 0, 1 is right here, and it's not on the line, so we'd say no. And negative 5, 0? Well, negative 5 on the x-axis is here, and 0 is right there on the y-axis, so it's literally right there. This dot's not on the line either, so we'd say no. Because remember, this equation is represented by this line. Any point on this line would make this equation true. If the points aren't on the line, it's not a solution. So if you're given a graph, it's great to know that. But if you're not given a graph like this, and this is a standard form equation also because the x and y are on the same side as the equal sign, what you can do without the graph is you literally just go and plug it in. So is 2, 0 a solution? Well, we'll find out. The 2 is multiplying the x, right? And we know that this is an x and this is a y. So that y will be replaced by the 0. And 4 plus 0 does not equal negative 2. So which of the following are solutions? Well, it's not a. And now we can just erase negative 1 and 0. So negative 1 was the x and 0 is the y. So that's negative 2 plus 0 equals negative 2. So this one's correct, but we got it says and, so we got to go see if 5 negative 12 is going to work also. The x is the 5. I always have a problem wanting to put a, a y in for the x, so I have to watch myself on that. All right, so this would be 10. This would be negative 12, and 10 plus negative 12 is negative 2. So, yeah, this one would appear to be correct. Um, 3, negative 7 um, would not make it correct. So it's not going to be that one. And since B is correct, it's not going to be D. So the answer to that would be B. So again, when you're not given a graph, just take your coordinates and plug them into the equation, no matter how crazy or weird it is, and just see if it's true. And that's what we're going to do down here for the very last one. Um, this is an X, and that's a Y. We want to know, is this a solution to this equation? Well, this is kind of like a a random linear equation. It's not in any specific format, but we're just going to plug a negative 3 in for any x, and we're going to plug a 2 in for any y, and we're just going to take it and simplify it from there. That y is multiplying the 5 there, too, so we'll go ahead and make that a 2. This would be negative 9, and negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, and 10 minus 10 is 0. So is this the solution? No. If I had a graph of this line, there would be some straight line there, and then this point would not be on the line because it's not a solution. If I had a graph of this line, these two points would absolutely be on it, and we'd know that it was correct, and these points would not be on that line. So um, the visual representation would be a lot easier, but if you don't have it, just plug it in and go.